A common practice in programming is to repeat a process, and this is called either looping or the more technical name, iteration. And I've created this flowchart on the right to show what a loop would look like. And so if we started inside of a program, eventually got to a conditional, the conditional is going to have a choice, whether it's true or false. If the statement is true, it's going to go inside the loop and do the statement, and then exit and go back to the conditional. Again, it's going to check, is it true? It's going to continually check, is the condition true? Until finally, it is going to find that it's false and continue on with the program and go to the code following the loop. In this video, I'm going to look specifically at while loops. There are different types of loops, for, while, do, while, but I want to focus specifically on while loops. And a certain type of while loop is called a count controlled while loop. Now you probably won't find that name in a textbook anywhere, the count controlled while loop, but I think it's a wonderful descriptor to say how this particular while loop works. Later on in a different video, we're going to look at an event controlled while loop and see what the difference is between the two. But in order to understand the difference, we have to lay the groundwork for the first one. And so a count controlled while loop is going to start with the word while, parentheses after it, and it's going to have braces beneath. The first part of a while loop is to have an initialization or a start. And you always want to initialize it outside of the loop. And so we're going to say int i equals 1. The second part is going to be the conditional statement, and it's also going to indicate where the loop is going to end. And so the only thing inside of the parentheses is going to be this conditional, which in this case is going to be while i is less than or equal to 5. And then the final part for a count controlled while loop is the increment. What am I going to increment by every time the loop runs? And in this case, we're going to increment by one or increase i by one every time the loop runs. And then finally, we need something to do inside of the loop. And so what we're going to do inside the loop is print out the value of i every time the loop runs. Now I wanna look at a specific task and you can see it up there in the top in the kind of teal box that says start at one, count to five, increment by one. And we've written this loop to accommodate that task. You can see at the top, i equals one, so it's going to start at one, count up to five, so you see the conditional is ending at five, and it's incrementing by one, indicated in i++. And I've drawn out this t-chart here in the middle of the slide that is showing what is i going to be as the loop runs, and what is the output going to be as the loop runs. So as we start the program, we see that i is equal to 1, and so we write that in our t-chart. We then, before we can enter the loop, have to check the condition and say, is i, which in this case is 1, less than 5? Well, yes, that's true. So therefore, we enter the loop, do what it says, and print out i. Now you can see right here, I'm writing the output of the individual iteration, and down here, I'm showing you the totality of what all of the output is going to look like. So this is one run of the loop, or one iteration of the loop, and this is the totality. Next, I'm going to add one to i, so i becomes two. This iteration is over, so then I'm going to check the condition again, find out, yes, two is less than five, continue on, output two, so you can see the totality says one, two, but this individual time, it's going to say two. Go to i plus plus, i becomes three, check the condition, yes, it's true, print out three, Add one to i, i becomes four, check the condition, yes it's true. Print out the value four, add one to i, i becomes five, check the condition, five is less than or equal to five, so therefore it prints out five. It's going to add one to i, i becomes six. You'll see in the t-chart that I have noted that six in red because this is going to be the last time the loop runs. It's going to check the condition, find out that it's false because six is not less than five. And so this would end our program. The output would be one, two, three, four, five with spaces in between the numbers. Okay, let's set up a different scenario. What if I said instead of starting at one, I wanted to start at five and instead of counting up to five, I wanna count down to one. And instead of counting up by one, I'm decrementing by one. So let's see how I change the loop. Instead of int i equals one, I'm going to start at five. Instead of saying i is less than or equal to five, I'm going to say, well, i is greater than or equal to one because I'm counting down. And then where it increments, instead of saying plus plus, I'm saying minus minus because I'm going down 
instead of going up. So let's see how these changes affect the loop and complete our task of starting at 5, count down to 1, and decrement by 1. We start at 5, we check the condition, yes that's true. We print out the value of i, which at the time is 5, it decrements by 1, and so now it's 4. Check the condition, yes that's true. Print it out, it's 4, decrement by 1, i is now 3. Check the condition, yes. Print out i, i is 3, decrement by 1, i is now 2, check the condition, yes that's true, print it out, decrement by 1, i is now 1, check the condition, yes that's true, print out i, and then the last time we're going to decrement by 1, i becomes 0, the condition is no longer true, and so the output of our loop would be 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and at the first iteration, it would be 5, then 4, then 3, then 2, then 1. Now we're going to give you a slightly different scenario. What if I wanted to start at 5, count up to 25, but instead of counting by 1s, I want to count by 5s. So I'm going to leave the first part the same, int i equals 5, because that's where I want to start. But the condition is going to be different, because I'm going to go up to 25, so I'm going to say i is less than or equal to 25. And instead of saying i minus minus, I'm going to add 5 to i every time the loop runs. So let's see how this would work with the t-chart. i starts at 5. The condition is true. i is less than 25. We print out i. Increment by 5, so i becomes 10. Check the condition. Yes, that's true. Print out 10. Increment by 5, i becomes 15. Check the condition. Yes, that's true. Print out i. i at the time is 15 increment i by 5, therefore i becomes 20. The condition is true, print out 20, increment by 5, i becomes 25, the condition is still true, print out i, and then lastly i would become 30, the condition is no longer true, and our loop would stop there. So our output would be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and we have met the goal that we set out to do. Now I want to show you an interesting thing that you can do with a count control while loop. Where you put the i++ can vary inside of the loop. If we were doing a for loop, that wouldn't be true. But with a while loop, you can do that. And so I've labeled this t-chart below because the i++ is below the system out print line statement. And we ran through this one earlier, and this is exactly what it would look like. The output would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But what would happen if I changed the place of i inside of the while loop, which is completely valid? I've called this t-chart above to indicate, hey, what's going to happen if it's above the system out print as opposed to below? Is it going to change anything? Well, yes, yes it is. And so i starts as 1, that's true, but automatically i is going to be incremented to 2, and so when we print, it would never print the 1, it would start by printing the 2. And then, as we see, it goes through the loop, it would be true, i would become 3, it would print out 3, true, 4, print it out, 5, check the condition, yes it's true, i would become 5, print out 5, check the condition, yes it's true, i would become 6, and in this case, we would print out i, which would be 6. Then we would check the condition one last time. No, it's no longer true. So the output, instead of being 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, when i was below the system out print line, the output is now 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, when i is above the system out print statement. And so you can see the placement of i, or the placement of the increment, is important inside of a while loop. In the previous examples, I've always shown i being printed out. Well, what if I don't want to print out i, but I want to print something like, I like pi. And let's say I want to do it five times. Well, that's what this example is going to show. i, or what's controlling the loop, is going to be in the background. And what's going to be prominent is printing i like pi. So let's see how this would work. We'd start with i as 1, check the condition, yes, that's true. We would print out i like pi. Increment i by 1, i would become 2, yes the condition is true. Print out i like pi again, increment again, i would be 3. Check the condition, yes that's true. Print out i like pi, i would be 4. Check the condition, yes that's true. Print out i like pi again, i would become 5. The condition is true, it would print out i like pi one more time, 
i would then become 6, the condition would be false, and we'd finish the loop. So you can see how i is kind of in the background there, and we're using the loop to do a separate task, which is print out i like pi. I've shown you the same scenario in this case, but I've made a mistake here on purpose. And maybe you could take a second to pause the video and see if you can find what the error is. All right, I'm going to show you what would happen if we were to run this program right now. It would only print out I like pi once. And you say, well, why is that? It's because I put a semicolon after the parentheses next to the while loop statement. And that parentheses is going to end the while loop and act as if it never happened. So when it finally does get inside of the loop, it's just going to print this value, I like pi, once, and then go on as if the loop does not exist. You are probably in the habit of putting a semicolon after everything inside of Java, but in this case, it's not a good thing to add the semicolon there. And in fact, if you do, you will not get the result you're desiring. So don't fall into that trap and keep that semicolon off. And if you do, you'll get the correct result, which will look more like this. I like pi printed five times. So repeating a process in programming is common, and we can accomplish this with loops. And the specific loop that we looked at is a count controlled while loop. A more technical term for looping is called iteration. Every time a loop runs, it's called an iteration. There are three parts to a count controlled while loop. Initialization, or where it's going to start. The conditional, where it's going to end and everywhere in between. And finally, the increment. What is it going to count by? And you might look at this, and if you're even a little familiar with a for loop, you're going to say, well, that's the three parts of a for loop also. Well, it's kind of interesting, the, the back history on this, in that first, there were only while loops. And because this format was used so often with the while loop, the count controlled format, the great programming scholars long time ago in land far away decided, hey, why don't we formalize this and make it into its own type of loop? And that's kind of the beginning of the for loop. So the count controlled while loop and the for loop actually work in the exact same way. But we're going to show you later a different type of while loop, an event controlled while loop that is going to really show the majesty of the while loop. As we showed you in the example, placement of where the increment is does matter. So if the I++ is before the system out print line, that made a difference versus whether it was at the bottom. So keep that in mind when doing a while loop. And also be aware of common mistakes. Putting that semicolon at the end of the parentheses it's understandable because you just want to put a semicolon at the end of everything that you do, but don't do it with while loops. Don't do it right after that parentheses, otherwise you'll get a result that you're not looking for. Looping is an integral part of computer programming, and the count-controlled while loop is an excellent tool to implement a loop inside of a program. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you like the video, please do click like below. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please do subscribe to the channel. Truly, thanks again for watching.